Isochrome maps show us the areas that can be reached from a certain point within a given time period. It's a powerful way to visualize the accessibility and connectivity of different locations based on your travel time. They can help you answer questions like, how far can I go by bike in 15 minutes? Which areas within walking distance from the nearest subway station? How does traffic affect my commute time? In this video, I will show you how to create interactive and static isochrome maps in R using Open Route Service, Leaflet, and ggplot2 packages. You will learn how to use the Open Route Service API to calculate isochrones for different modes of transportation and durations. Then we will plot the isochrones on an interactive leaflet map. And finally, we'll create also static ggplot2 maps with isochrones and other spatial data. By the end of this video, you will be able to create your own isochrome maps in R and explore the spatial patterns of travel in your area of interest. In today's tutorial, we'll be mapping travel time using open route service data, which is open source project that provides various geo services based on user generated and collaboratively collected free geo data from OpenStreetMaps. This is such an awesome open data source because it allows you to plan routes, uh, for different modes of transportation, such as car, bike, walking, hiking, or even wheelchair. Calculate isochrones, which we will be doing in this tutorial. So basically catchment areas that can be reached within a given time or distance. Computing uh, time distance matrices, performing geocoding and other things. So I'm now scrolling down and you can see some of the projects on the website. And the website is openroutservice.org. Um, so one good thing about this place is that you can get ready-made polygons of these catchment areas that we will need. So you don't need to calculate anything. You just need to provide the location and then you will get uh, this catchment area for even any given time uh, span. So how much you can actually travel using these different transportation modes. And then one of the coolest things about this whole open route service platform is that there are also packages for Python, R, JavaScript, and a QGIS plugin that you can use to analyze the data. And since we are working in R, this comes very much in handy that there is an R package. But about this package a bit later, for now, the most important thing is to go back to the beginning of this street. And the biggest question here is, how do we access the data? Well, we need to have an API key. And in order to get the API key, we need to register. So you can go to the upper right corner of the screen where there is a login. You can click here. Of course, we're not registered yet. So uh, in this new window that just popped up, we need to sign up. So we click on the sign up. And then there are two options. One option is to sign up with your GitHub accounts if you have it. The other one is to fill out these details. We will register using GitHub, but you are free to uh, fill out your personal detail here. And before you actually sign up, I think it's very important that you take a look at the notes uh, here. So once you register your accounts, it's for one person and one person only, and you will receive one free API. And the second thing, there are quota limits here. Unfortunately for isochrones, uh, it's a maximum of five locations that you can do um, and 10 intervals and 120 kilometers range distance. So it's not that much, but I think it's it's worth it just to kind of a show, you know, what you can do uh, with this uh, with the service and especially that there is an R package which makes things easier. Anyways, so we can go back to the uh, top of this page and we can click on sign up with GitHub and then proceed with the sign up and getting this API token. So if you went for the GitHub registration, this is the window that will uh, pop up. You simply need to authorize the service to be uh, linked to your GitHub and then you're good to go. This will take you to your personal dashboards where you can see your profile details. So these are my profile details based on course on the on my GitHub page. Uh, here you can add some more things such as, for example, your website or sector, and you can also change your password if you want. But the most important thing, and this is what this message is saying, is that we, you need to accept the terms of service once more in order to use the API. So we actually click on this one and then we click on submit. All right, so it says here that the terms of services have been accepted on 10th of October. Now, the second thing is you need to get a token. And then while you're here on your dashboard, you will see um, next to your profile tab, there is tokens tab. So click on the tokens tab and over here you can request a token. So if you click on token type, there is only one type because we are cheap and we don't want to pay. So that's a standard one. We click on that one and then token name, you can name whatever you want. 
So uh, I'm just gonna use the name of my, my channel. That's gonna be the name. And once you're done with that, you simply need to create a token. So click on the button, create token. And my token was successfully created. You won't see the key here, but I have the name, I have the key. And it says here that it's valid and also tells me how much of the quota I have. Okay, so I do have 500 isochrons left. So that's pretty cool. We can do some interesting stuff here. All right, so that's how you do it. The next step is to go ahead and check out uh, this R package uh, that this open route service has created for R specifically. And then we can go ahead and uh, load some of the data in R and start creating this isochrone maps. Welcome back to R, where we are ready to kick off our new adventure on mapping travel catchment areas. And the first thing to do here is to uh, install this package called Open Route Service, which is going to help us communicate with the Open Route Service API and get those uh, travel catchment areas for the location of our choice. The next thing is to then the, define the packages that we will also need uh, in this R session and that we will first install and then load into our R session. So we're going to call those libs. And the first one is the umbrella package Tidyverse. From this one, we'll be using Dplyr for data wrangling and ggplot2 for creating static maps. The second one is the aforementioned open route service. Uh, which will help us get uh, catchment areas in the asset format. Now, in order to work with the asset format, we definitely need also the asset package. One of the data visualizations apart from static maps with ggplot2 will be to create interactive maps where you can actually zoom in and zoom out catchment areas with a certain street layer backgrounds. Uh, and for that, we'll be using the leaflet package. For the static maps with ggplot2, it's very nice to have those street layer backgrounds. And uh, for this purpose, we'll be using a map tiles package, which is going to help us fetch uh, open street maps or statement maps as well. And in order to be able to plot these as a part of ggplot2, we'll also load here tidy terra package. All right, so once we define the list of packages that we need, we first of all need to check if these are uh, actually installed on our system. So we're going to go ahead and use uh, this uh, lib, lib that we created. And then we're going to go into the row names of installed packages. Now, the next thing is to check actually if these are indeed installed. So if they're not installed, then we need to write here an if else statement. So if any of installed libs equals false, uh, then it means we need to actually install them. So we need to install dot packages, but not all packages. We need to install libs and especially those that are not already among the installed libs. Uh, once we install the packages that we need, the last step is to simply load those packages. So loading packages in R is simply easy. Here we are working with a list of libs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a library function to this uh, libs list. Before we start using Open Route Service, I wanted to show you what uh, this package actually brings to us in terms of the data. So the first thing is I want to show you what are the available modes of transport that Open Route Service uh, supports. So I'm gonna write here first of all Open Route service and then i'm going to call the profiles that exist so ors profile and then open brackets so once i run this it's going to print out all the possible profiles uh, of mode profiles that exist so here they are um, there is a car there is a driving h a gv bike road bike mountain bike e-bike walking hiking and wheelchair so there's a lot of them uh, now if you're going to use any of them, you should use those that are in double quotes. So this is the string value that will be accepted and understood. Um, and in our case, what we can do is we can actually check uh, some of these. I'm very much interested in the car, in the bike uh, and walking, I think. So those three are pretty much interested, but you can go ahead and also uh, kind of explore more of, of these different uh, options. So that's one thing. The second thing that we will need to define is uh, the point of interest for us. 
So uh, in that case, you need to here define let and long. Now, if you're wondering how you can do that, you can uh, go either to Google Maps or OpenStreetMaps and then just type there any kind of location that you're interested in. In my case, uh, I opted for uh, just kind of a, a random location in Amsterdam. So I'm going to just enter here uh, the latitude and longitude codes. So the latitude code would be 377, so 52.377. And then the longitude is uh, 4.827. Uh, so this is what I'm, I'm going to be using. And then uh, last but not least, actually last but the most important thing is your API key that you want to define here. So this is something that you got upon the registration with a token and you should actually uh, put it here and you should make it a string here. So please, uh, please uh, just insert it here, paste it here in the, um, you know, form of the string. So it would be something like this. So instead of these asterisks, you will have a combination of, of numbers and letters. So in this tutorial, we'll be mapping catchment areas and creating the so-called isochrome maps, which help you understand how much distance you can travel by a certain mode of transport in a given time. And to create isochrome maps using Open Browse Service uh, package, we'll be using ORS isochrones uh, function from this package. So here, I just wanted to first of all show you what uh, this function can do and what are the parameters that you need to define. So if you go down to the arguments of this function, you will see that for locations, you need to um, define actually either a single longitude latitude, or if you are working with something else, you need to define you know, a pair. But in this case, uh, simply longitude and latitude, which can also be a list. So you're not really uh, limited to a single coordinates. You can actually define more. Uh, the second one is the profile. And this is something that I already showed you, um, which is about uh, the existing modes of transport that this package supports. So uh, driving, walking, hiking, even wheelchair. The third component is the, the range that you want to capture, and it's uh, captured in seconds. So it's for the time, um, that you want to define. So let's say you want to see, uh, let's say for Amsterdam or that specific location that we provided within an hour, how much you can actually reach. And the good thing here is uh, you are not really uh, only limited here to a single range. What you can do is you can even divide, let's say one hour into, into specific uh, minutes frames. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then also what you have here is the API key, which you also need to define. Uh, and then uh, finally the output. So this is how you will uh, get your output. And most likely it's going to be the list, but it's going to be the list of SF objects, which is very important for us. All right, so this is basically it. Uh, what we can do next is jump straight into writing the code and uh, actually observing how this goes in practice. What is the data that we get and how can we use this data then to create this isochrone maps of catchment areas? All right, let's write our first query in which we will ask the Open Route Service API to give us a catchment area for traveling by bicycle in Amsterdam within one hour. So the first thing is to create an object, which we're going to call it cycling underscore AMS. And then we're going to call open route service and it's ORS uh, isochrones uh, argument here or function. And then for the locations, what we need to specify are those coordinates that we already have. The best way though would be to uh, pass this as a data frame. So I'm just going to create a new data frame, which is going to be called quartz. And I'm going to pass to this data frame longitude and then latitude as well. And then for locations here, I'm just going to define uh, coordinates. The second thing we want to define here is the profile or mode of transport. And as we said, we would like cycling. If you remember from uh, the previous uh, part where we actually discussed, okay, what are the possible modes of transport? Cycling regular was the one that was suggested for just simply uh, biking. Uh, the third thing is the range. So this is uh, the range in seconds. So as we said, we are interested in how much you can travel within one hour. So one hour translated to minutes is 60 minutes and then translated to seconds is 60 times 60. So that's 3,600 seconds. 
Next thing is the interval. So as I said, I'm interested in 10 minutes intervals. Uh, 10 minutes translated to uh, seconds would be 600 seconds. Then we should also supply the API here, uh, key here, so that we are able to, uh, of course, access the data. And then uh, finally, is the outputs, and I would like this to be in the asset format. You also can quickly inspect the data, and what you will see is that exactly we got the SF object, which is a polygon with the WGS84 coordinates reference system, and there are six polygons in total. They are grouped um, here, and what we see here are the values. The values here represent different, uh, of course, time intervals in seconds. Um, and then we also have here, uh, for each of them, this, it's the same center or the same centroid, but the polygons are different. And we're gonna use in the next step, this value here uh, to determine, of course, the area, but the catchment area itself will be determined by this geometry. Now that we have the SF object with catchment areas for each travel time distance, we are almost ready to create our first visualization. But before we do that, we need to do some data transformation. The first and the most important data transformation that we need to do here is to crop the overlapping polygons. So each of the catchment areas becomes bigger and bigger, but it also encompasses the smaller catchment area. So we need to actually um, intersect uh, these bigger um, catchment areas by the smaller areas so that we capture only those areas. Why are we doing that? Because in the data visualization, in a map, uh, if we keep it the way it is, then these bigger catchment areas are going to uh, completely overshadow the smaller areas and then you won't see actually the differences. So this is the first task that we need to do. So the first thing is to turn off the spherical geometry so that we avoid uh, SF package throwing any errors. To turn off uh, the spherical uh, geometry, you can use SF use S2 uh, and then equals false here in the brackets. Okay, the second thing before we do any intersecting is to do some kind of a smaller data transformations on the values that we already have. So over here, what we're gonna do is uh, create first of all minutes out of the seconds because it's just gonna be much easier to understand what's going on. So I'm gonna create a column here called mins and mins is going to, uh, as we said, be based on the value column and to get minutes out of seconds, we simply need to divide uh, by 60 here. Uh, and then the second thing that I would like to do is um, I would like to convert this one into a factor. So I'm going to go here and create a factor and simply pass uh, this one as well. And um, yeah, once we do that, we are then finally ready to do some cropping. So in this cropping, we're going to be creating a new object called Cycling AMS Cropped. It's going to be based on this one, Cycling AMS. We're just going to put it into a pipe. And then uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to be uh, grouping here. So we're going to group by uh, those mins. So why are we doing that? We're doing that because minutes is actually what distinguishes each of these group of catchment areas. Uh, so we're going to first group by those mins, then we're going to build another pipe. And once we do that, we can actually apply uh, ST intersection which is actually going to cut each of these by the previous catchment area. And that's how we're going to build uh, unique non-overlapping catchment areas. So we're going to also put this into a pipe. And then the final and the very important step is to ungroup what we previously grouped by. So we are ready to create our first interactive map of different catchment areas for uh, cycling time distances in Amsterdam. And for that purpose, we'll be using leaflet package, which is going to uh, help us create a map in the HTML uh, format with uh, certain uh, layer backgrounds. And we will be then able to zoom in and zoom out and, of course, see all these different catchment areas together with the legend. So the first thing to define before we jump into leaflet is the palette function. So what are the color values that we're going to be using and what are the values that are going to be associated with that? So we're going to be creating here an object called uh, Pal Effect, and then we're going to be calling leaflets. Now remember that our values are factors, so they are categorical values. So for leaflet to be able to recognize them, we need to use here color factor to, uh, uh, of course, decide what is the palette and then to associate a color palette with those values. Uh, in terms of the color values, uh, you can use, for example, uh, our color brewer here uh, palettes. 
If you're not sure how they look like, you can check out uh, right here. And I'm also going to provide a link in the description box below to uh, these Color Brewer parallettes so you can decide what you want to use. So we're going to be using one which is called RDPU, which is basically a red-purple combination. That one. And then in the domain uh, argument here, we need to define what are the values according to which we want to present these colors. And of course, the value here is called mins, right? So this is what we want to do. And I also want to reverse these palettes uh, because I would like uh, those smaller catchment areas to be associated with darker colors and a greater catchment areas to be associated with lighter colors. And finally, uh, I'm also gonna uh, select that for uh, missing uh, values, I would like uh, to, to not have any uh, color value. Or in other words, it should be transparent, so we should be seeing uh, the layer. Okay, and then finally we can go ahead and use leaflets. So we're going to be using argument leaflets uh, from the leaflet package. So this is how you are uh, building it. Uh, and here you need to pass basically this uh, asset object that we'll be using. And uh, then you can build a pipe. So within this pipe, uh, then we can add polygons. So leaflets again, and a function is called add polygons. Uh, within this one, there are several things. First of all, if we set here that fill equals true, it means that we will uh, fill the interior of the polygons with a certain color. The second one is stroke, which is optional. I would like to use it here because this is going to allow also to select uh, or actually to map lines around these polygons. The third argument is color. This one is going to color the lines of the polygons, so those uh, boundaries of the catchment areas. And for that, I'm simply going to use uh, this one that we already have. You can also pass here any other single value. Um, weight argument is uh, optional here, but it's going to help you uh, determine how thick your line is going to be from zero, basically almost invisible, to one, which is very thick. The next argument concerns the finally the palette that we're going to use to uh, fill out the interior of the polygons. So here we need to use this lambda sign and then our function that we defined, open the brackets, and then here specify to which values this applies to, in our case, mins. The final thing is also pretty much um, something that is, uh, I would say, optional. So this is the opacity. And here, uh, for example, I'm going to go for a bit kind of a lower, let's say 0.3, so that we can we be able to see also the uh, background layer so that we can compare different uh, catchment areas against each other. Uh, we then build another pipe here, and one cool thing about Leaflet is that you can choose different providers for your layer backgrounds. And this is managed using add provider files. Uh, so here there are different ones. Uh, you can check out the Leaflet package and see what is actually offered there. But I'm going to go for one which is grayscale and offers some minimum detail of uh, streets, names, and also town names, and it's called Carto DP. Um, and it's the Positron one. Uh, the Positron one is the grayscale one. Okay, and then we build the final pipe here, which is going to allow us to add a legend. So add a legend, and also it is leaflet, like the previous one as well. So in this one, which is called add legend, the first thing you can specify is where you want the legend to be. So I'm gonna say here, bottom right side of the screen, the second one is the palette that you want to use uh, to show the legend. Of course, we want to use the same palette that we use to color those polygons. Then what are going to be the values that we're going to be presenting here? Of course, the values here are um, related to mints. And you also need to set the labels that you want to print. Uh, in our case, we're just going to use the same one. So we're going to be using mints here. Uh, and then also we can choose the opacity. Let's go for, uh, let's say, 0.5. And finally, and optionally, you can also put the title here. So we can, for example, put here cycling distance within or cycling distance in Amsterdam. And this is our first interactive map of cycling distance in Amsterdam within one hour time divided by 10 minute intervals. Uh, as you can see, the smallest catchment area relates to the smallest uh, time, which is 10 minutes. And then this color that we chose becomes lighter and lighter as we go to the higher catchment area. 
Uh, these values are also reflected here in the legend, so you can also check that out. Of course, we um, organize this by minutes. But this is not all. I will also show you how you can make static maps for your own, let's say, publications. It's quite easy. So first of all, we're going to be transforming our SF object into a Mercator projection because we will be fetching the layer which is in this projection, so we want these two to be aligned. So we're just going to be creating here, cycling, um, Again, AMS, uh, but it's going to have this uh, addition, so it's uh, clear that it's Mercator. And then we're going to transform using ST Transform from the SF package. So we're going to pass here cycling AMS prop. And for the Mercator uh, projection, we're going to be using 3857. Okay, and once we do that, we can finally use map tiles and get tiles. So I'm going to call this AMS layer and then call map tiles and then function get styles um, and then we did this one we need to pass of course uh, this newly created or transformed object uh, and then we need to choose the provider so the good thing about this concrete uh, package is that we can use the same provider that we used in the leaflet so that's going to be carto db.positron and the final thing is to choose the zoom level so you can play with this one i opted for 11 if you increase it's going to also increase the level of detail but it's going to need some more time to download this layer and finally we can also write the code and create this cycling map using ggplot2 so the first thing is to of course pass ggplot argument uh, and then the next thing to plot this uh, background layer will be using tidy terra tidy terra has one option which is called geom spat raster and then rgb and then here we just need to pass uh that data so the data is uh ams layer uh and then uh, we can then add to this one our sf object using geom sf so the data here is uh cycling ams merc so we're using the one that we converted to mercator so that it's aligned with the layer background uh, and then we define our main aesthetics, which is actually both the fill and the color. We're going to start with fill. So for fill, we're going to be using the factor of mince. Um, the mince is already turned into a factor or a categorical variable, but this is simply to confirm because sometimes uh, it's not really confirmed by, by ggplot2. So color, we're also going to be using mince uh, to, define, to define those uh, values. And then finally, we're just going to say here that geometry field equals geometry fields uh, in the asset project. Uh, and then outside of this aesthetics, there are some other optional things that we can also define. One of them is, for example, size of those polygonal lines. Uh, I would go for 0.2, so a bit thinner line. Uh, you can also do the opacity here, which is called alpha. So uh, the more you increase, the more visible it is. Uh, and I'm going to go also for 0.5. And uh, finally, uh, I'm also going to say here, since I have already another layer, uh, I'm going to say here that I'm not going to inherit the aesthetics of this uh, AMS layer. Okay. Uh, then we can go ahead and specify the color palette that we're going to be using. Uh, so the thing here is because our main aesthetics, which is fill and color, is using categorical values, we need to use here scale fill manual, which is using ggplot2 for categorical values. Uh, the first thing is the title. Uh, so we can simply say here that uh, we are showing the minutes. Uh, the second one is the values of the color palettes. So we are lucky that we can also use ggplot2, the same color palette, which is our red purple that we used before in leaflet. And for that, we can simply use HCL colors to define it. So we will need six values. We also need to pass that. And uh, the second thing is that, that we need to pass here is the name of the palette, which is exactly the same name that we use in Leaflet. Uh, we're also going to be defining scale color manual for those polygon lines. So I'm simply just going to, um, you know, copy and paste this one, but we don't need the title name since we are anyways going to be presenting the legend for the, the field value. Um, and then what else can we actually do here? We can also define, uh, let's say, the, the labels. So we can also do the labels here, but I think it's not really necessary since it's already defined as, as a factor value. Okay, we can also specify furthermore uh, the legend itself. 
one thing that I want to say here is that we're not going to be using color to present the legend, but we're going to be using the fill aesthetic. So here, the legend itself is going to be, uh, of course, fit for categorical values. So we'll be using this guide legend, open the brackets, and then we can specify several things. So I want a legend to be horizontal, so the number of rows is going to be one. Um, I want uh, actually those legend keys to be next to each other, so I'm using this next argument. And then I can also define uh, the key height uh, in units. Uh, I'm going to say that it's going to be five millimeters by five millimeters. So both the width and the height are going to be um, five millimeters. Okay, apart from this, we can also define, for example, title position. So I would like to, be, to have the title of the legend on the top. And we can also define the label position. Uh, labels can be placed uh, just below those legend keys. So that's why I'm using bottom. And finally, we can also um, horizontally arrange uh, these uh, labels. So we can use label H uh, just, and I would like them to be centrally uh, arranged. So a 0.5. All right, one of the last things that we can do here is to define our theme. I like to use theme void because it gets uh, gets rid of uh, this excess uh, environments around your plots. But I also like to use theme where I can specify some other things. And one of them is that I would like to have the legend on the top. Uh, so just above the map itself. And another thing is defining the plot margins. So uh, I like actually to use plot margins because they do help me um, get rid also of this kind of white space that is around the map itself. So here we need to define for each of the parts of the, of the map or each of the sides. So they should be set to zero. So the top, right, bottom, and then the left side also should be zero. And very importantly here at the end, we also need to define what kind of units we are talking about. And then the final part, which is optional, is again to add the title to your plot. Uh, and here we can uh, simply use what you used before, so cycling distance in Amsterdam. So, okay, and we also got the static map of cycling distance in Amsterdam within one hour by different uh, time intervals. And this time uh, I'm actually pretty happy how this turned out, except for maybe the 60 minutes interval because it really blends with the layer background, so it's not that visible. Perhaps we should have gone for uh, actually higher opacity in this case, but nevertheless, this uh, is still kind of a very noteworthy and I think can be used uh, also for uh, your publication or for any other purposes. If you thought this is all, then you're up for a surprise because I wanted to show you one more cool thing, which is how to query multiple travel modes for the same location. So here we're going to be going for three uh, specific uh, modes of traveling, and this is walking, cycling, uh, and uh, driving a car. We're going to be using Amsterdam and we're going to be using specific time span, which is going to be simply half an hour. So how much can you um, you can travel uh, within half an hour given these three modes? This one is a bit specific because we'll be we'll need to write a custom function that will uh, then issue three separate calls to the API, then put the outputs uh, of uh, this uh, result into a list, and then turn this list into a single asset object where you will have uh, those uh, three layers within a single asset object. So uh, if you forgot what are the actual um, uh, codes for each of the travel modes using Open Route Service, we can check it out again. So Open Route Service, and then within this one, there is an uh, argument called ORS Profile. So you can uh, simply run this, and once you actually run, you will be able to see uh, different modes of transport. So as we said, we are interested here in the driving car. That's the first one that we want. The second one is cycling regular by bike. And the third one is foot walking. So let's go ahead and write these different uh, travel modes and put them into a list. So uh, travel underscore modes, and then we put them into a list. And the first one is going to be foot walking. So that's the first one. The second one is going to be uh, the one that we used before, so cycling irregular. And the third one is going to be driving car. Okay, 
Now we're ready to write the custom function that will put things into lists. So let's call this list uh, travel list. Uh, and then uh, let's actually write, first of all, the for loop. So for mode in travel modes and then open the curvy brackets and then within the curvy brackets what we're going to do is we're going to create this object called travel list well actually we're going to append the travel list append the travel list for uh, with each mode results and then again we're going to be opening here curvy brackets and here we're going to create an object called travel ams so this is the one that's going to trigger uh, the API calls every single time for each of these transport modes. So that means that we need to use, um, again, open route service, and we're going to use ORS uh, ISO roams. So within uh, this one, uh, as you remember, we need to first of all define locations. So we're going to go again with Amsterdam, so uh, we can just pass ports as we did before. Now for the profile, we're going to use every mode of transportation. So because we're in a, a for loop here, then we define profile uh, equals modes. For the range, as we said, we want half an hour. That means 30 minutes times 60 seconds. So that would be uh, 1800 seconds. And here I don't want to create any intervals. So if you don't want to create any intervals, you want a single interval. Uh, your range should be equal to interval. So 1800 in this case. And then for the API key, we're going to be using the same API key. And of course, the outputs of each of the transport modes should be in the SF format. Okay, and uh, once we actually define this, we simply need to uh, call this uh, travel list. Okay, so once we actually have this, uh, once we append each of the travel modes uh, outputs that we got from uh, the API, uh, then we can go ahead and uh, put together all these uh, different API outputs into a list. So we're going to be calling this uh, travel mode AMS. And so they're actually already in the list. So if you're using this uh, chunk of code here, they are already in the list, but what we want now is to transform them from the list into a single asset object. So that's why we're using here our bind. So we're going to uh, bind them row wise and we're going to bind, of course, the travel list itself. So if you followed everything closely so far and there was no error in your way, you should be able to see a simple features object with those three uh, features. So uh, one polygon for foot walking, another for cycling and the third one for driving your car. Creating an interactive map follows the same process, so instead I would like to show you how you can create another type of a static map. This time, because we have different travel modes, we're going to put each catchment area into a different panel and then create a single plot out of them. But before we do that, we do need to create um, a categorical variable that is going to denote these different modes. So for that purpose, we're going to be using this newly created travel mode AMS and we're going to be creating the column called modes. Uh, this column is going to be a categorical uh, variable, so we're going to be using factor here. And then we're going to transform the row names uh, of these travel mode AMS. So we're going to be transforming them and we're going to also shorten those labels that currently exist by defining the new labels. So instead of, uh, you know, regular cycling, we're just going to use cycling here. Instead of uh, car driving, we're just going to use driving. And finally, instead of foot walking, we're just going to be using walking. Just as we did in the previous exercise, we will need to turn this travel mode AMS into a merc Mercator um, projection. So we're going to go and create a travel AMS Merc and then call ST transform from this as a package and then apply it here travel uh, and modes AMS and I use 3857 for the wrappers system and then instead of writing the whole code for the ggplot2 we can actually work off this one that we used in the previous exercise of course we're going to change several things one of them is this name of this ggplot I'm going to call it travel map we're still going to be using AMS layer here but uh, the data itself is going to change. So now it's going to be called travel AMS 
uh, Merc. And here, instead of minutes, we're going to be using modes column also here. Then in terms of the scale field manual, uh, we're not talking anymore about the minutes. So it's going to be travel mode. Also, in terms of the colors, we now have only three colors. And I would like also to change the palettes to reflect the categorical nature of, uh, of those values. So instead of using this, which is more like uh, related to numeric values, I'm going to be using one which is called set2 and it relates to categorical values. The same values in this argument I'm going to copy and also paste here for the color of the polygon borders. Uh, we are not going to be creating a legend here because, uh, as I mentioned, each panel will have uh, the map of a specific catchment areas with the colors and also the panel titles, so it's going to be evident also from there. But what we're going to do here is add a new argument called facet ref, which is going to create those different panels. And it's going to be creating based on this mode column. Now, going back to uh, theme, we're going to keep theme voids. In the theme itself, uh, we don't need a legend, so basically the legend position is going to be none. And then there are other things that we can also define here. Uh, one of them is, for example, uh, plot title. So, plot title, uh, I'm using this one and I'm writing about this one now because uh, I do want to make a difference between the plot title and also separate uh, panel titles. So I want to make plot title a bit bigger. I'm going to choose 14 pixel size. Um, also, I want to make it bold. And also, I would like, in terms of the color, to go for charcoal uh, gray color. Uh, there are also other things that you can define here. And one of them, for example, you can horizontally justify this one uh, by choosing 0.5. Now, if you're wondering how to customize the panel titles, uh, there is our argument, which is called strip.text, and it's also element text, the same way plot title is. So here uh, we can go ahead and simply copy and paste uh, these things here. So we can go ahead and choose, let's say, a smaller font size. Uh, it doesn't need to be bold uh, though, and also it can be, let's say, a bit lighter, but also gray. And then finally, but also an optional argument, is defining the, the title of the plot. So here I'm just going to use, let's say, travel distance in Amsterdam. And finally, here is the panel plot with three maps for each of the travel modes for cycling, driving and walking, also denoted by different color. And of course, you can see that the smaller distance that you can travel is uh, on foot, followed by cycling. And finally, the biggest one is definitely by driving, even though Amsterdam is known as a cycling uh, city, but still the driving uh, gets you as far as, as this. And that's all for today, folks. In today's tutorial, you learned how to create isochron maps with R using the Open Route service and the Open Route package in R. We created two types of maps. First of all, catchment areas for a single mode of travel and a single location, but different time intervals. And second one, catchment areas for different travel modes for a single location. I'm really looking forward to your own application and how we can take this tutorial to some other cities, regions, and countries around the world. If, however, you're interested in reproducing today's analysis, I've prepared a link to the GitHub repo in the description box below. If you have any questions, comments, or just general feedback, feel free to reach out to me here on YouTube, but also on X and Instagram. If you're new to R and you seek to expand your data visualization and geospatial knowledge with R, I've prepared a few cool tutorials for you. See you next time.